Yeah, so I'm back working with Facundo. Um, okay. He was who I was working with prior to Proven. Um, the relationship that we had and the communication we had was was incredible. Um, it was something that you know I feel worked for me. I liked the trajectory we were on. We really had we had two seasons we worked together. One was the COVID games we want to call it, and then we had um, 2021. 21, yeah. Um, where I ended up taking fifth. So that was my best games performance with him. So back to that. In 2021, you took fifth? Sorry, I didn't know that. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, got to break that top 10. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Ah. Hey, thanks for, thanks for throwing, thanks for someone throwing that. John, if you would have been here on time, you would have, you would have been, you would have said that. I but what you said wasn't true. It wasn't true. He was on. You didn't say it for the first time. You just said. I know, but I was trying to jerk him off with like saying he did great as an eleventh, and it was really kind of an insult because <laughs> he had a fifth. I would have pulled up twenty twenty one if I would have like been a little more. Um, I know a uh, Zachary Kadats fifth is crazy. Yeah, fifth is crazy. Let's, hey, so are you on like um any kind of like um uh did you spiral from that? Are you in any kind of depression or you're on Xanax or anything from going from a no. uh no, okay. Uh, Patrick Vellner, Brent Fikowski, Bjorg van Karl Goodmans and Saxon Panchik, Jana Costi, Guillermo, uh Guillermo uh, Malheros, Alex Vigneault, Lazar Jukic, Noah Olsen. <coughs> Scott, you beat the great Scott Panchik by a hundred percent. Yeah. I think he was, he was at, I think he was at fifty he was at fifty percent. <laughs> <laughs> How does the conversation in, in, initiate back with Facundo like do you go back and say hey sorry I messed up like can we or like does he approach you how does that happen yeah no we've stayed in contact for the last two years um anytime I mean Facundo was the first real coach that I've worked with um that I wanted to keep that relationship you know he's never done anything wrong to me you know he's um always wanted my success when I when I approached him and told him hey um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for more. I'm looking for a training group. I'm looking for people to push next to every single day. Um, can you provide that? And it was something like, no, like I'm a remote athlete. Like how, how are we going to do that? Um, and it was very respectful and, um, it was just something that I wanted to explore as an athlete of like, Hey, is this something that I'm missing that's going to move the needle one or 2% or 10%? Uh, he was very understanding of that and he supported that all the way through and checked in with me through the past two years and we just kept that relationship rolling. Uh, Make what's great again. Saxon had his best year when I was still training with him. I've also heard that to be true. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Woolley has some great stories about training with you. Uh, Chris Giles, fifth and close to third. That is correct. Uh, Brent Fikowski had 1,028 points that year. Saxon had 996. Fourth place was just 1,004 points, only eight points ahead of him. So, that, I mean, that was a really uh, close uh, year. Um, yeah, I want to say this real quick. There's this comment here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know all the, all the hype for Facundo is. And, I mean, other than the things that Saxon said right here, every conversation that I've had with Facundo – he is super invested in the success yeah. of his athletes. And absolutely. We all you gotta say about that. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I've never had a conversation with him that's with anything other than something to benefit his athlete. He's always looking yeah. for him. Before absolutely. you answer that, I, I want to say one thing before you answer that, uh Saxon. Um uh good Tony, uh fair question. Um because it is hard to see what, what value Facundo adds because you're on the outside, right? We're all on the outside. Um, and you write, don't know what the hype is for Facundo. Kind of strange and sounds like he has way too many athletes to actually be beneficial. I want to say this. It's a crazy resume the guy has. So it's weird to question whether he's good at rubbing backs, whether he's good at programming, whether he's a good hype man. I don't know what it is, but or whether he's good at programming. But here's the thing. He's got a ton of great athletes. But listen to this. Saxon Panchik is going back to him. So it I mean, that screams louder than having a massive stable that someone's actually coming back to you. So uh, go ahead, Saxon. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's going to be different, right? Like it's, like I said before, it's not one size fits all. It's, you might have an athlete come into a training camp and like, it's the piece that they were missing. Um, or they might come into training camp and be like, oh no, like this is taking me further from it. Uh, and I think it just depends where athletes are. Um, I don't think... I don't think enough – like, okay, so here's an example. If I was to go work with, you know, somebody that won 
on the male side or the female side. Does that mean, you know, just because they're my coach, I'm going to win? Absolutely not. Um, like, okay, so say they were the, say they were your, uh, your competition. You think if you did the same training with them, you're going to get the same result? Absolutely not. Everybody has different backgrounds. Um, you know, you might be great at gymnastics and running and monostructural things. Um, but, you know, you step up to a barbell and you can't move the barbell. You know, just because you're working with somebody that won the games or a coach that has created a, you know, one-time champ, two-time champ doesn't mean that that's what's going to be good for you. And I think it just depends. Um, I think athletes need to look and see, okay, what am I missing? Like, what have I changed and what have I tried and what worked and what didn't work? And I just, I think, I think it's important for athletes to be honest with themselves and figure out what that missing piece is and, and be willing to try different things. Um, who was me, your coach there? Who was your coach at Proven? It was Shane. And, and did you see him a lot? When they lived here, yeah. Oh. Um, so there was a... T- they they had, moved- it, it, it changed. It's kind of changed throughout the year. Um, so, you know, we had moments where we all did the same program and we pushed each other and we created this this training environment where, you know, you're, you're pushing the limits, but there's also times where, you know, I think they have three coaches where, okay, in the off season, you're going to work with your coach on filling some different gaps. Um, so yeah, it just, it, it, it changes. I think there, there's a lot of athletes, um, improving. Um, and for me, I just wanted a coach where I just have that communication, um, on a day-to-day basis of you understand what I'm doing. Like it's not what's good for everybody. It's what's good for me. And I think there's so much more to the sport than just the fitness. I think there's a lot to how you train and your nervous system and, and recovery and hello. Um, Hold on one second caller. Go ahead. Finish texting. Sorry. Like you, you can't go and you can't beat your head against the wall every single day. Um, that you just got to find what works best for you. Caller. Hi, what, go ahead. Hey, Sevy, it's Plummer. Uh, quick question for Saxon here. Just wondering, um, what were those like one to 10% things you took away from uh, your time at the Proven Camp? If you have any that you can share. Great question, Will. Thank you. Yeah. Um, honestly, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but I think the one thing that I picked up on um, was more than just fitness. It was, it was the ability to grow mentally, to read, to seek to seek more. Um, I think that was something that I was actually missing in my life to grow as an athlete, as well as a man Um, that, you know, I started to explore, okay, how do I move into a direction of, of confidence in my training um, confidence in my ability and confidence to, to take the competition floor. Um, That's something that I faced a lot through my career, you know, where I spent my first three years um, going to regionals and did I feel like I belonged there? you know? Um, and I felt like I was able to gain that knowledge and that confidence of like, okay, this is how you take the competition floor with confidence and the ability to back your fitness and the ability to back yourself. 